we're going to be building our very own Web3 GPT store. So similar to, again, how ChatGPT has their GPT store, we thought it would be fun to put a Web3 twist on this. So here is my application. You can see we are brought to a login or sign-in page first. This is actually our connect embed. So our application lives behind this sign-in wall here. So all we need to do is connect our wallet. Now I'm going to connect the MetaMask wallet here. And once we're connected to a MetaMask wallet, this is our application here. So we're in the chat feature right now where we can start chatting with our GPT here. We can type in a message. Up here, we can select the GPT model. So you can see here, I have a Japanese teacher and a blockchain expert. And if we come over to shop here, you can see we have different GPTs we can purchase. We can purchase a, a five-year-old GPT with Japanese teacher and blockchain expert. I already have these two, but if I hit five-year-old, Let's buy this here. We have our transaction up here. We just need to pay for the gas here. So we hit confirm. There we go. We purchased our GPT. Now we can come back to chat here. And if we hit select GPT model, you can see now we have that five-year-old GPT that we can select and it will give us the model or the GPT of the, the five-year-old one that we have. Now I can select, uh, let's say Japanese teacher here. And I would say, uh, give me five simple phrases. So we'll say, give me five simple phrases. We'll wait for the response here. You can see here, it's going to provide us five simple Japanese phrases. I didn't specify Japanese phrases here, but because it is a Japanese teacher, it knows that what it's going to be teaching us is Japanese. It says, uh, could you please tell me your name? This way I can address you properly. So we'll just say Sean here. And there you go. It's addressing me by my name, it's giving me five simple phrases here in Japanese. And again, we can create our own GPTs, create them as NFTs, people can purchase them in the shop. And then depending on the ones that they own, they can implement them here into their chat. Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another tutorial video. And in today's video, we're gonna be building our very own version of a Web3 GPT store. So similar to how ChatGPT just announced their GPT market, we thought, why don't we put a fun Web3 twist on this and create our very own GPT store. Now in our Web3 GPT store, people will be able to buy different GPTs, which will be as NFTs. And those NFTs will hold the metadata, basically with the instructions of how that GPT should act. Then we'll build our very own chatbot with OpenAI and we'll be able to select which model or NFT we want to use within our chat. We'll also create a store where people can buy these different GPT models and when we go into the chat you can select which GPT model you want to use. So an overview of what we're going to cover in this video. We'll first deploy our smart contract that we'll need in order to create our NFTs for our different GPT models. Then we'll build out our application which will involve our chat and allowing our user to select which model they want to use and a little store within our application where people can mint or claim these NFT GPTs. So with that being covered, let's jump into our computer here and let's get started. What we're going to do first is deploy our smart contract. So I'm going to head on over to ThirdWeb's website here, sign in with my wallet, and I'm going to head on over to the contracts tab. And I'm going to look for the addition drop. It should be under the popular section, but if you don't see it under there, you can find it in the NFT section by hitting view all and we're going to look for addition drop. Now addition drop is an ERC 1155 token contract. This means that we can have semi fungible tokens, we can have certain tokens, which will be our GPTs, but we can have multiple owners of that token. So we can have multiple copies of a single token. This way, we only need to create the GPT once and multiple people will then be able to claim it. So what I'm going to do is hit deploy. Now, we're going to name our contract here. I'm just going to say GPT NFTs. We'll just say GPTs. Uh, you can add a description name, set your parameters here. Um, what I'm going to do is come down to the network and chain here. And in this drop down, you can select any network or chain, uh, any EVM compatible network or chain that we support. You can find it in here. You can search the network name. So in this case, we're going to use Mumbai. So I'm going to search Mumbai. Once you select the network and chain, you're going to hit deploy now. And we're going to confirm this here and we're going to sign this signature request here to add this contract to our dashboard. And once that is done, the next thing we're going to do is create some GPTs for our application here. So on the left hand side, we're going to come over to NFTs and we're going to create some GPTs. Now, if you aren't familiar with what GPTs are, what ChatGPT allowed people to customly 
create their own custom GPTs. They could give it their own instructions and rules on how they wanted the GPT to act. And essentially, that's what we're going to be doing with these NFTs here. So I'm going to hit single upload. We're going to name our GPT here. So I'm going to name this one the same as the, our demo one. So we're going to add a Japanese teacher here. Now you can add an image and everything if you want to. We're not going to do that here. Uh, but we are going to use the description. Now, there are multiple ways you can go about doing this. But what we're going to be giving the GPT or the description here is the instructions you would normally give a chat GPT when you want it to respond in a certain way. So in here, I'm going to say I want you to act as a professional language teacher with expertise in Japanese. The first thing you will do is receive the user is from the user is receive their name and address them in Japanese. Again, customize how you want this GPT to perform and act. Now you don't have to add it in the description here. You could add it in the properties or traits maybe. You could redirect one of the properties or traits to a centralized system. You can maybe redirect it to grab the instructions for the GPT from maybe an IPFS hash. You can retrieve these instructions however you want, but just to simplify this tutorial and everything, we're just gonna drop the instructions for the GPT right here into the description of the NFT. Now, some reasons why you might not wanna do that is anyone can just go up into the NFT and then copy the instructions to the GPT and paste it into their own. But again, to simplify this tutorial, that's where we're going to be putting it. But of course, you can create a more secure way of storing the instructions for the GPT. We're gonna give it that simple instruction there. We're going to lazy mint the NFT. We're gonna confirm that transaction. There you go, we have our NFT minted here. I'm gonna select it and we're just gonna give it a free claim condition. So I'm gonna select it, come over to claim conditions. We're gonna add a phase, we're gonna make it public. I'm gonna leave it as unlimited and I'm gonna make it free. You can configure this to your liking if maybe you're going to sell these or maybe you only want a limited supply of them. Click confirm. And there you go. We now have our smart contract deployed and we have one GPT that we minted as an NFT. But of course, you could replicate this process and do it for multiple NFTs. Next thing we're gonna do is create our project here. So I'm gonna open up my terminal and I'm gonna create a new third web project. I'm going to run MPX third web create app. Uh, we're gonna upgrade our CLI here. Then we're gonna name our project. I'm gonna name this web three GPT store. We're gonna use Next.js and I'm gonna use TypeScript for this tutorial. Once that's done, we'll change into our project here. So web three GPT store. And we'll open this up in our code editor. Now, first thing we need to do in our code editor is set up our third web provider. So in the pages folder under the underscore app.txx file, we're going to set up our third web and configure our third web provider here. So the first thing we need to set up is the client ID. And if we come back to our file directory and we go into the .env.example file, you'll see this is where we can put our client ID. Now our client ID is gonna be our third web API key. So if you come back to third web's dashboard and you come up to the top and you go to the settings tab, it'll bring you to your settings here where you can see your API keys. Now you can create a new API key. I already have one made. If you wanna learn a little bit more about API keys, we'll drop the links down to the docs and a tutorial video down in the description below. I'm just gonna take this API key here. We're gonna come back, paste it in. I'm going to save that. And I'm gonna rename this file here to just .env. I'm gonna get rid of the .example. And there we go. We'll come back to the underscore app.tsx file. And that is our client ID. Next, we need to set up active chain, which is stored in this active chain variable here, right up here. By default, it's set to Ethereum. You're gonna change this to the chain or network that you deployed your contract to. Now, if you do need to import additional chains, you can import it from thirdweb-dev slash chains, and you can pass them directly into the active chain here. But that's all we need to do to set up our third web provider. What we'll do here is we'll open our terminal and we're gonna run yarn dev to run our project here. And what we should see here, if I just connect this, is our boilerplate code here for third web. We have our connect wallet button here and we can connect a wallet and everything to our application but we know our project is up and running. The next thing we're gonna do is if we look at our demo project here and let me just sign out of this one. 
is we're gonna create this sign-in page here. The sign-in page, basically a sign-in wall where a user needs to sign in in order to use our application. One, we need to know what NFTs of the GPTs they own and they need to have a wallet with those GPTs in order to use our application. So we're gonna create this sign-in page first. So I'm gonna come back to my code editor here. I'm just gonna drop this down and I'm gonna come into my file directory and head on over to the index.tsx file. Now in this index.tsx file, there's some boilerplate code here. I'm going to delete everything within this div with the class name of container. I'm just gonna select all this, this here, right over there. We're gonna delete that. We're gonna delete this image import and we're gonna delete the connect wallet as well because we're not gonna use connect wallet in this one. Now here, I'm going to create a variable that says show connect embed. This is going to use the use show connect embed hook from third web. We're gonna be able to use this to determine whether or not a user is signed into our application. If we do need to show them the connect embed, it means that they haven't connected a wallet. And once they do connect a the wallet, then we don't need to show them the connect embed anymore and we can show them our application. So in here, we're going to say if we, oops, if we need to show connect embed, then we're gonna create our sign-in page. And if we are signed in, then we're gonna display our connected or our chat application right over here. So we're gonna create a div here. I'm gonna give this div some styling. Again, this is for our sign-in page here. So this div is gonna have a display flex, direction of column. And we're gonna center everything and give it a view height of 100% of the view height. We'll give it a H1 header here and we'll just say a login to start or login to chat maybe. And then under here, we're gonna give it our connect embed. Now for our connect embed, we can give it some styling. And if you wanna learn a little bit more about connect embed, we do have a video specifically for connect embed on how to customize it, theme it, and how to use it in your application. We'll drop a link to that video down in the description below. But we can create a custom theme here, uh, which is going to be a dark theme. And we're just gonna override some of the colors here. The one color we're gonna override is the background um, of the modal, and we're just gonna give it a black background here. So if I come back to my connect embed, I can say the theme of this is going to be my custom theme. I spelled custom wrong, I'll just get rid of that E, there we go. So custom theme, and then we can still override some styling in here. And for the styles, I'm gonna set the border here to none. Uh, that's just gonna get rid of this border that wraps the modal. And once we have that, if we come back to our app here, there you go, you can see log in to chat. It shows our list of wallets here that we can use. Now let's configure these wallets here. Maybe we want to support, we'll support MetaMask. Um, and you can support any other of these wallets as well, but we also wanna support embedded wallets. Allow a user to sign in with an email address and a wallet will be generated for them. So in order to do that, we can come back to our underscore app.tsx file. And in the third web provider, we can add supported wallets. With supported wallets, we're gonna give it an array of the wallet types we wanna support. So first one we wanna support is embedded wallet. Again, this is gonna allow a user to sign in with social logins or an email. And then maybe we'll add a MetaMask and we'll add one more, we'll add maybe a Coinbase wallet. And again, you can just list in the wallets that you wanna support right over here. But if we come back to our app, you can now see that we have these social logins we can log in with. We can log in with our email and we still have the Web3 wallets we can use. Uh, you just have to hit connect wallet here and those list of third-party wallets or whatever wallets you wanna support will be listed in here. So again, we can now sign in with Google and our user will then be generated a wallet and be brought into our application. So coming to our demo here, let me just sign in. So in our demo app here, let's create this top nav bar here first where we have our chat, which is our chat application here. And then we have a link that will take us to a shop page, which we can see the different GPTs that are available and we can purchase them. 
along with this little profile image, which will give us the options for our wallet here, allow someone to disconnect their wallet and everything from our app. So coming back here, what we're gonna do is create that first. So we'll come back to our code editor. I'm gonna create a new folder here in my file directory. We're gonna name it components. And in that components folder, I'm gonna create a new file called navbar.tsx. And in here, we're gonna create our navbar first. So I'm gonna create my nav bar here. And for our nav bar, I'm gonna give it some styling here for the div. We're just gonna give it the style display flex, flex direction, roll, justify content with space between, align everything in the center, give it some padding and we'll give it a width of 100%. Right over here, we're gonna give it a title. We'll just say web three GPT store. In the middle here, we're going to give it our navigation links. And then on the right corner, we're going to use the connect wallet button. So we can use the connect wallet button UI component here, uh, but we can configure it a little to show a avatar instead of showing like a button detail. So in the detail button here, we can configure this detail button to render out any component that we want. So we can render out, uh, let's say a div. And in that div, we'll have it uh, display an image and that image will be this placeholder avatar image that we have here. And we can set the style here to uh, have a border radius of, we'll just say 15 pixels. So we'll save that. And then in our index.tsx under our show connected embed. So again, we're displaying our sign in page here and under here, We'll first put in our navbar component. So we'll find our navbar here and we'll hit save. We'll come back to our application here. We'll sign in. And once we're signed in, you can see here we have our title that says GPT store and we have our little avatar here that gives us our settings for us to switch networks, disconnect our wallet and et cetera. So let's add in our links really quick here. So we'll come back here and in our navbar.tsx in this middle div, we'll add in our links. So we'll add in our links, we're gonna import our styles here and we're going to have one link here that just brings us back to our homepage, which will be for our chat application. We'll give it some styling here and we'll give it a margin right of one rem. And we'll have a second link here that's gonna take us to our shop page, uh, which we're gonna create in a little bit. But I'm going to get my styling here. Now I added a few styling. We're gonna just add some styling here into our home.module.css file. And we just have some styling for some of the items and nav links that we have. If you wanna see these stylings, you can view it here really quick, pause the video. We'll also have a link to the GitHub repo down in the description below. But now I have that saved, let's take a look at our application. We now have our two options here for chat and our shop. Uh, we don't have our shop page set up yet, but we're gonna set that up in a bit. So we now have a complete nav bar here with our links and our connect wallet button here where we can like disconnect and log out of our application. Next thing we're gonna do is work on our API, which is going to be communicating with OpenAI and ThirdWeb's engine. And the reason we're gonna be using these two is one OpenAI is gonna be for us to generate our AI chat and to give the specific GPT rules and guides on how that chat should interact with us. And we're gonna be using ThirdWeb's engine to one, check to make sure that the wallet that's connected actually owns these NFTs. We're gonna be able to grab the metadata of the NFT that is owned by the user to get that description that we gave the rules and we set the rules to for the GPT and then be able to use that within our GPT response. So coming back here to our code editor, I'm gonna create a new file, a folder in my pages folder here. We're gonna call this API. And in that API folder, I'm gonna create a new file called chat.ts. So the one thing you're gonna need is if you don't have an API key with OpenAI, you are gonna need that in order to, again, generate your AI chat. So you can come over to OpenAI, sign in, and you'll have to create your API keys here. And you can see here, you can create your API keys and this is what you'll need in order to again, generate those chats. We'll also be using 
the Vercel AI SDK. This is going to allow us to create our chat streams and everything really quick and easy. And it's gonna allow us to build again, UI components for our chat with our GPTs. And then finally, you'll need an instance of Third Web Engine. Now, if you don't have one, you can create an instance here. And we have the links down to tutorials and the docs down in the description below. So coming back to our code editor here, we're going to install a few things. Uh, I'm going to do them one at a time. So we're going to yarn add. We're going to install Third Web Engine first. We're also going to install OpenAI. And we're going to add AI as well, which is Vercel's AI SDK. And once we have those three, we're first going to get an instance of our open AI here, which is going to equal, let me just close this terminal here real quick, which is going to be a new open AI. And we're going to need to provide this with our API key. And we'll store this API key in our .env file under this open AI key variable. So I'm just gonna copy this, uh, go to our .env file and paste that in here, because we're gonna need that. We're then going to export our runtime here to equal edge. And this is for, again, the AI or Vercel's AI SDK. Then we're gonna create our handler here, which is going to equal an async function, function which will be a post function, which is gonna take our, oops, request here of type request make sure we export that and then in our handler here the first thing we're going to do is get our variables from our response body and the variables we're going to be getting is one the message so the message that we are sending as a user uh, who is communicating and chatting with our ai we need the address um, of the wallet address so that we can check to make sure that address owns the NFT of the GPT they're using. And then we're going to need the token ID as well uh, of the token ID of the GPT that the user wants to use. Next, we're going to run a try catch here. In the catch, we're just going to console log the error. And then in the try here, the first thing... And then in our try here, we're first going to get an instance of engine here. So we'll get engine. This is going to equal a new engine. We're going to have to provide this with our engine URL, which we're going to store in our env file as well. We'll store it under engine URL. We'll also need our access token, uh, which we're going to store under our env file as this engine access token. Now we're gonna make sure these are strings. So we'll just add as string. And then let me just add these into our .env file as well. And then our access token, there we go. So now that we have engine, we can use engine to check if our, if the wallet connected or the address holds the token ID of the GPT that is wanting to be used. So we'll say is owner and we will await engine we're going to check um the balance which is an erc 1155 token because that's the addition drop contract that we deployed and we're going to check the balance of and we're checking the balance of uh first thing the wallet address so we can put in the address that we are getting here next is the token id that we're checking so we're going to check the token id Next thing we need to do is give it the chain and contract address. So in my file directory here, since we're going to need that chain and contract address here, we're going to just create a new folder. We'll just call it lib. And then in that lib folder, we'll call uh, create a constants.ts file. And in that constants.ts file, we're going to export some variables here. So the first one is going to be chain, uh, which is going to be, in our case, uh, Mumbai but this will be whatever chain you deployed your smart contract to. And then the other variable we're going to export is going to be our contract address, which we can get from our dashboard here. So we're gonna come back here. Where's our contract? So we're gonna get contract, copy the address here, and then paste it right in here. Now coming back to our chat.ts, again, we need the next thing we need to give it is our chain. So we can give it our chain here. And then the final thing is our contract address. So we can just give it our 
contract address right here. We'll save that. So again, we're going to check if they are the owner of the GPT NFT that they want to use. Now we'll check if they are or if is owner equals zero, meaning their balance is zero. We're going to return a new response here that says you don't own the token and we're going to give it a status of 403. So if they don't own the token here, then, um, oh, and we need to make sure that we get the result here. So if the result equals zero, it means they don't own the NFT because their balance is zero. And that means they can't use the GPT. So we'll say you don't own this token and we'll give them a status of 403. Next, we need to abstract, uh, we need to extract the description from the NFT because that is where our GPT guide and model is stored. So we're going to first uh, get, uh, we'll call this NFT metadata. We'll await engine again. This is an ERC 1155 and we're going to get run the get here and we're going to get the metadata of our NFT here, which we're going to give it the token ID, which is token ID, uh, the chain that it's on, which is chain. And then the contract address, which is the contract address. Then we are going to get our, we're going to call this context content, uh, which is what we're going to provide to uh, OpenAI for our chats. And we're going to get this from our NFT metadata dot result dot metadata dot description. Because uh, that, again, is where we stored the um, GPT instructions. You'll store or get your GPT instructions from wherever or however you stored it into your NFT. In this tutorial, we just made it simple. And again, we just put it in our description here. So we're going to then create a variable called context. This is going to be the context that we provide to our OpenAI chat here. So role. We're giving this the role for our system and then the content of the role is going to be our context content and this again is going to be our instructions to chat gpt or our gpt on how it should respond in our chat thread next we're going to create our chat thread here so we're going to uh, create a variable here called combined messages which is going to be an array of our context and our message. Uh, messages, did we not make it plural? Yeah, uh, we'll make that have an S there for messages. So that's going to be, uh, again, a array of our context and messages. Then we're going to get our response from our, from OpenAI here. And we're going to await. And we're going to do open AI, open AI dot chat dot completions dot create. And in here, we're going to set the model. So we're going to be using, let's use a GPT 4 1106 dash preview. You can select whatever model of GPT you want to use. Uh, we're going to set the stream here to true. And we're going to set the message messages to our combined messages. We're then going to create a stream here, which is going to use the open AI stream from Vercel's AI SDK. And we're going to provide it with our response. And then what we'll do is return a new streaming text response and provide it our stream here. And that's going to provide us back our responses and everything from OpenAI. So again, this is how we're going to communicate with one um, OpenAI. And we're going to be using Engine to verify and check to make sure that the um, wallet connected is actually an owner of the GPT that they're going to be using. So next, let's create our UI for our chat. So if we take a look at our demo here and we go back to chat, let's create this section here where We'll be displaying our chats here. We have a little input field down here that we can uh, chat with our GPT and a little sec selection here where we can select our GPT models. So coming back to my file directory here, I'm gonna create a new file in the components folder. 
And we're going to call this chat.tsx. And I'm first going to create a type of GPT props. This is going to take our token ID that we're going to be using, uh, which could be string or number or null or undefined. Then we're going to create our chat component here. Right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create some references here for our form input and our input field. So we're going to create one for our form ref, which is going to be, we're going to use, use ref here, and it's going to be a form element. We're going to do the same thing for an input field. Uh, so put input, input ref for an input field. We're also going to need to get the address of the connected wallet. So we're going to store it in an address variable and then use the use address hook from third web, which returns us back the wallet address of any wallet connected to our application. Then we're going to use the use chat from a, uh, Vercel's AI SDK to create our chat here. Uh, so we can just uh, make sure we import use chat from AI slash react. So for use chat, we have our messages, we'll have our input, we have our set input, we have handle our submit and is loading. And in here for when we submit, we are going to give it our body here. That is going to include the address, which is going to be the address variable that we use to get our the connected wallet's address here. We're then going to have a token ID, which is going to be the token ID that we're getting from our GPT props here. So that's our body. Uh, then we have on response here. We'll take our response. And if our response dot status equals 429, uh, we're going to console log uh, that our rate limit is over. Else, we're going to just console log that um, message sent successfully. And then on here, on error, we'll just console log um, our error message if we have any. So now we can create our input fields and everything for our app. So we're going to create a div here. This div is just going to have some styling with uh, some margin on the bottom. Now what we're going to do is check our messages. So our messages that we have from use chat. And if our messages dot length is greater than zero, then we're going to display our messages. If it is zero or less than zero, it means we don't have any messages. So we'll just display something like pick a model and start chatting, right? Because if we don't have messages, it means we didn't start chatting yet. And if we do have messages, then what we're going to do is get our messages and we're going to map through our messages, which will get our message and our index. And for each message, we are going to create our little chat bubble or chat section. And depending if it's from us, the user or our AI bot, will style it differently. So first off here, the uh, div, we're going to give it a key, oops, which is going to be index. Uh, and then we're going to give it some styling here. So some styling here, the background, uh, depending on the message role, if it's a user, uh, we're going to make it the background white. If it's not the user, then it means it's our chat or our AI bot, uh, and we'll make it light gray. So within that div here, we're going to create another div. This div is going to have the titling of who it is. So if it is our user, then we're going to make it green. If not, we're going to make it black and we're going to display the role of the user here. So in here, we're going to take our message role. And if it equals user, then we'll display user text. And if it doesn't equal user, then we're going to display some other text. So if it is the user, then we're going to display user with some padding and everything. And if it's not our user, then we're going to display bot. And then it'll show 
the bot with the black background and then user with green background. And then below that, we're going to show the content of the message. So if it was our message that was sent, it should show the message that we sent. If it's the response from the AI, it should show the response from the AI here. And then we'll add some color and padding to that as well. So again, that is for our chat section. Next, we're going to create our next. We're going to create our little chat bar at the bottom of our page. So I'm going to create a div here. Give this some styling. We're going to give it a fixed position on the bottom of the page with 100, some padding, give it some border and a background color of white. And in there, we're going to create a form. And this form is going to provide our input field where we're going to be able to chat with our GPT. So this form here, we're going to reference our form ref. Uh, our on submit, we'll be using the uh, handle submit from the use chat from Vercel's AI SDK. We're going to style here and we're going to display flex and align items center. And in our form here, we're going to have an input field. And this input field is going to have a ref of input ref. A placeholder, we'll just say type a message. The value is going to be input. The on change is going to set the input. And we can also say on key down. So when we enter, or if a user hits enter on the keyboard, uh, we can handle submit as well. So if the user does hit the enter, it'll still submit the uh, request to submit whatever the user had inputted. And we'll give the input field some styling here as well. Then the last thing we need to do is create our button here for our form, which depending if it is loading, we'll say sending. And then if not, it'll say send. So if we are chatting with uh, our bot and we're waiting for a response from OpenAI, it'll say sending. And then if not, then we can send another message and we have the send text here. Now for this button, oops, we'll also have it uh, disabled if it is loading and we'll give it some styling here. Right there, we'll just give it some margins, a border radius, background color and things like that. So that does it for our chat component here. Next thing we're going to do is add uh, it to our index.tsx along with the uh, selector uh, for our user to select which GPT they want to use. So back in our index.tsx here, under the show connect embed, we're going to get the address here for our user address. So we use address hook from third web. Then we're going to get the um, contract here and we're going to be able to use this to check the owned NFTs that this user has. So we're going to use the use contract hook here, provide it with our contract address. Then we're going to get the owned NFTs. So we're going to get the owned NFTs here using the use owned NFTs hook from third web, which we need to provide it with the contract. So our contract that we just got and then the address we're checking it for. So address. And it's going to give us back all the owned NFTs that that address owns. Then we're going to create some state variables so that we can create this little drop down here. So this little uh, drop down where a user can select their GPT that they own and they know which GPT they're currently using. So we'll come down here, we're going to create uh, a state variable for selected model or we'll say selected uh, GPT. And then we'll set the selected GPT here. And we'll use state, import that. The default text here will say select GPT, right? That's the default text that that little selector will show. Then we have the uh, selected GPT ID, which we'll set. By default, it'll be no. And then we'll create a last state here for is uh, modal open and we'll leave that as a default of false. So now we'll come back down here and under our nav bar, let's create a div for our chat application here. We'll give this div some styling here of flex. We'll give it a flex direction of row, 
justify content space between, align things in the center and give it some padding. The first thing that we're going to have is our title here, which is a GPT chat. And then on the right side here, this is where we're going to have our little uh, GPT selector. So we're going to give it a div here. We'll give this div some styling of a display flex direction, flex direction role, justify content space between and align items in the center. We'll create a div within that which will have a position relative and a min width of 200. This will be that little selector button that we have on the top. So within there, we'll create another div. That div is going to have some styling, some margin, border, padding, border radius. The cursor is gonna be a pointer because that's our little selector div. And then on click, it'll set the modal to um, close or open, depending if it is closed or open. And the text that it should show is the selected um, GPT. So it'll show whatever selected GPT we have. So by default, it'll show select GPT. And if we select the GPT, we're gonna set it to show that selected GPT. So below here, we're gonna check if the modal is open, then we're gonna display that little selection of the owned NFTs that we have. So we'll create a div here. That div is gonna have a position of absolute. Um, we're gonna set it to top 100%, left zero with 100%, background padding, some border radius, and some styling for it. Then what we're gonna display here is we're gonna first check that we have our owned NFTs. And if owned NFTs dot length is greater than zero, we'll display our owned NFTs or our owned GPTs. If not, then we're gonna display that you don't own any GPTs. So we'll just give it some text here saying no GPTs owned. Uh, but if we do have some owned NFTs, we're gonna take those owned NFTs, we're gonna map through it. And for each one, we're gonna get an NFT. And for each one of those NFTs, we're gonna dis, uh, display the name of that NFT there. So we'll get uh, this P tag, we'll set the key here to the nft.metadata.id. We'll give it some styling here and a class name. So we just set the class name to a model item, which we have some styling in our CSS for that. Uh, then we're gonna set the on click here. And what the on click is gonna do is one, set the selected GPT to the nft.metadata.name. It's also gonna select, set the selected GPT ID to the ID, and then it'll set the uh, is modal open to false. So once you select one, it's gonna close the modal. And then below that whole div there, we're gonna create our chat component or set our chat component. So we're gonna do chat here, and the we do need to provide it the token ID, and the token ID we're gonna provide it is the selected GPT's ID. So with that, we can come back here, and if we come back to our app, you can see here, we are signed in. Uh, we select model, it says no GPT owned. So I'm gonna set my open AI, uh, open AI API key here. Uh, you're gonna get your engine URL and your engine access token. Again, you can come to your instance of engine and once you connect here, you have your engine URL here and under permissions, you can create an access token and that will give you API access to your engine instance. So you're gonna paste all of that stuff into your variables here in your ENV file. I'm gonna do that now and then we'll come back and check out our chat. So now I have all of that set, I'm gonna come back to my app here. And we're logging into our chat again. There we go. So again, we don't have any uh, models here that we can use. So now that we have that set, we can create now our GPT store so we can allow people to purchase or mint or claim these NFTs and allow them to use those GPTs or those NFTs as the GPT they wanna interact with. Now remember we created a uh, in our nav bar a shop here. So in our files here in the pages folder, I'm gonna create a new file called shop.tsx. And we're gonna create a very simple shop page here for uh, being able to claim our NFTs. 
So we're going to create our shop page. And for our shop page here, we're going to create some main tags here. We'll import our styles here. Then we'll give this a class name of styles.main. In here, we'll create a div. Oops. And give this a class name of styles.container. And we're gonna act and we're gonna create an embed for this as well, too. So we can actually uh let's see. We'll just come in here, we'll create a new component, and we're gonna call this uh connect or we'll just call this um sign in .tsx. Uh this is going to be our sign in and we're going to create a component for this since we want to make sure that no one can access our shop page as well unless they have a wallet connected because they won't be able to claim any of those nfts without a wallet so we already created a sign in here so we're going to return um, and we're going to get from our index at tsx this here and we're going to come back to our sign in.tsx, paste that in. We're going to import connect embed. Uh, we're going to get our custom theme as well. So we'll just uh, export, cut that out. Come back here. We have our custom theme, import dark theme here. And there we go. So now we have this sign in component. So now in our index, we can get rid of this, create our add our sign-in component here, and then the same thing for our shop.tsx. Um, in here, we're going to again say uh, show connect embed, and we're going to use show connect embed. And if we need to show connect embed here, then we just put in our oops sign-in component. And then if not, we're going to display our shop here that we're going to create. And our shop here will have our nav bar. And we're going to create a div here. This div is going to have the class name of styles.grid. And what we're going to do here is get our NFTs from our contract and display the available NFTs. So what we'll do here is get our contract using the use contract hook from third web providing it our contract address then we're going to get the nfts from our contract and we're going to use use nfts and say from our contract get all the nfts there and then what we're going to display in here is we'll first check that we have our nfts and that the NFTs dot length is greater than zero. Because if it is zero, then we're gonna say no GPTs available, right? Because we don't have any NFTs that they can claim. Uh, but if we do have some NFTs, we're going to map through those NFTs. For each NFT, we get back our individual NFT. And for each one of those NFTs, we are going to create a little NFT card that we can purchase those NFTs with. So we can set the key here to nft.metadata.id. And we'll give that some styling here. And then what we're going to display is the NFT's name or the GPT's name. So we'll do nft.metadata.name. And then below that, we'll have a button that a user can click in order to claim that NFT. So we'll say we'll create a Web3 button here uh, that says, uh, let's say, claim GPT. Now, our Web3 button uh, requires two things. And this Web3 button allows you to interact with smart contracts on chain. Uh, so we need to provide one with our contract address that we want to interact with. And in this case, it's our contract address, and we already stored that in our constants. And then we have to provide it with the action that the button is going to take on top of that contract. So on our contract, we can um, say here that we want to claim. We can specify that it is 
uh, an ERC-1155 contract. Uh, and from there, we can call our claim function. Now, our claim function needs two things. Because it is an ERC-1155, we need to specify the token that is going to be claimed. And in this case, it's going to be the nft.metadata.id. And then we need to provide the quantity that's going to be claimed. And we'll just say every time someone clicks it, they're just going to be able to claim one of those NFTs. Uh, we can also set the, the on success here. So if we uh, do successfully claim the NFT, we'll just alert that our GPT was claimed. You can do the same for um, on error and on submit as well. You can create your own states for your buttons here. Uh, but we're just going to do on success and alert. And now we have our shop page here ready for us. So if we come back to our app here, I'm just gonna give it a quick refresh. We're gonna log into our chat. We're gonna come over to our shop page. We'll give it a moment. It should load our Japanese teacher here. Now, if I do sign out here and disconnect, uh, it should bring us back to a login page. Cause again, we shouldn't be able to access anything unless we are logged in. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to connect with the MetaMask here just because I have some funds in this MetaMask and we're going to have to pay for gas in order to be able to claim this. But after this, we'll go over really quick on how you can add something like smart wallets or something to cover gas fees and stuff like that. So I'm going to claim this GPT here. You can see here that we have brought up here. It's free to claim. I just need to pay the gas here. So we'll hit confirm. There we go, we got the alert that our GPT was claimed. I'll hit okay. We'll head back on over to our chat. Now when I hit the select GPT, I should have my, my Japanese teacher appear. Uh, it looks like it's there, but it's not showing. Let's take a look real quick. Um, if we come back to our index.tsx. Uh, we didn't add anything in here, that's why. <laughs> Uh, we need to add our NFT metadata.name. There we go. There we go. Now it shows our Japanese teacher. So if we select that, you can see Japanese teacher is selected. And I can say, um, how do I say good afternoon? There you go. You can say in Japanese, good afternoon is konnichiwa. And you can see here that we don't reference anything about it being a Japanese teacher or anything, but because we have the GPT model selected that it is a Japanese teacher, it knows that what it's supposed to do is teach us Japanese. So our GPT and everything works here and we have our shop so we can create more NFTs with different uh, models and guides and instructions for our GPTs. We'll be able to claim them as NFTs and if we own them, then we'll be able to use them and interact with those GPTs here. Now, again, like I said, mentioned earlier, right now, in order to uh, go in our shop here and claim these GPTs, you have to have a uh, wallet with gas in it, um, which means someone has to know how to have a wallet with gas. But if you wanted to utilize like our embedded wallets, which is our social login and emails, you can use that in combination with something like smart wallets and turn on a feature like gasless to cover the gas for those users. And that will allow you to create a very seamless user experience. So we'll quickly go over that and we'll drop some links down in the description below to other tutorial videos on how you can set up smart wallets with your Web3 applications. But I'm going to come over to my code editor here. I'm going to come to the underscore app.tsx file. And I'm going to create over here a variable called uh, smart wallet config. And the smart wallet config here is one going to be our... Uh, factory address which we're going to provide our smart wallet factory address and we're going to set a gas list here so gas list uh, we're setting this to true because we want to be able to cover gas for our users now coming over to uh, third web's dashboard here we're going to deploy ourselves a new contract so let me just open up a new tab here we're going to hit the deploy contract and we're going to deploy ourselves an account factory contract here so all we got to do is hit deploy you could check off a network. Uh, so under network and chains here, you can see we can add this to our dashboard. If you want to deploy a deterministic address, you can. We're going to uncheck that for this tutorial. I don't want to deploy a deterministic address. Essentially, you can deploy the same account factory contract uh, to the same 
contract address across multiple chains, but we're not going to do that here. We're just going to deploy a account factory to the Mumbai network. So I'm going to hit deploy now. We're going to confirm this to deploy. Then again, we'll sign this signature request here to add it to our dashboard. There you go. We now have an account factory contract, which is going to deploy us our smart contract accounts for our users. So we're going to copy this really quick. And what we'll be able to do is we're going to paste that into our factory address here. And now let's just say for our embedded wallets here. So we're going to delete this. Uh, and we're going to add a smart wallet. And our smart wallet, it's going to take our wallet config, which we're going to allow embedded wallets here. And we're going to give it our smart wallet config. So what this is going to allow us to do is anyone who signs in using embedded wallets, so a social login or email, is going to get a smart wallet or a smart contract account generated for them. And with that smart contract account, we're going to have gasless enabled here, which means that user doesn't need to spend or fund their wallet in order to make on-chain transactions. It'll be covered on our behalf. And what that means is now, if we come back to our application here, I'm going to sign out of this wallet here. It means now I can sign in with a social login like Google. Once I sign in, it's going to sign me in to a smart wallet. You can see our smart wallet is connected here. This is our smart wallet here. Uh, you can see that this was generated for me. It doesn't have any funds though in it. So technically I shouldn't be able to execute uh, any on-chain transactions because I won't be able to pay for it. But because smart wallet has the gasless feature enabled, we can cover that gas for our user. Uh, you can see here, I don't own any GPTs. I come to shop here and I hit claim GPT. What this is going to do, it's going to execute the on-chain transaction. It's going to claim the NFT for us and it's going to pay for the gas using the paymaster from the smart wallet. There you go. You can see our GPT was claimed. And now if I come back to my chat here and I hit selected GPT, I now have the Japanese teacher and I can now say, how do I say, what time is it? And now again, we were able to claim an NFT without having to interact with the blockchain at all. All I had to do was sign in with my Google account and I was able to claim and execute a block on-chain transaction and smart wallets were able to was able to take care of all the gas and everything for me. And you can see here that our GPT is now working. And there you have it. We built our very own Web3 GPT store and chat GPT. This was again, a fun twist on how you can use blockchain and NFTs to kind of create a creative Web3 chat GPT and use NFTs as your different GPT models. And you can even sell those NFTs or trade those NFTs with people and be able to interact with these different GPT models depending on how you instruct and guide them to chat with. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on tutorial videos just like this. If you have any questions on anything that we just went over, we'll drop a link down in the description below. You can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of your questions. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. Until next time, see ya.